Hello everyone, welcome to the next lecture in the course Remote Sensing Principles and Applications. Till now we have discussed in detail about image remote sensing image acquisition systems and the basic principles of uh, data collection, what data is being collected and how to convert the data into surface reference all those concepts. Essentially with respect to data our focus is on the solar reflective portion of the electromagnetic spectrum that is wavelength less than 3 micrometers. Also the image acquisition systems that we have seen till now like the whisk broom scanner, the push broom sensor, all those concepts are essentially the ways in which images in this particular solar reflective portion and also the thermal infrared portion how data will be collected in these two portions like wavelength up to say 14 micrometers. So now we are going to continue with the topic of analyzing the data in the solar reflective portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Rather than analyzing I will say that how this particular reflectance is being recorded that is we now know that satellite sensors collect radiance and we have also seen the steps to convert this radiance to surface reflectance. And this is our primary interest like acquiring the surface reflectance of various features is of the primary interest to remote sensing users especially when we are dealing with wavelengths less than 3 micrometers. Starting from this lecture and maybe next few lectures we are going to see what causes certain objects to look like uh, in a certain way that is uh, we now know how, what the reflectance will be. What we are going to see now is why the reflectance is like that and how commonly occurring earth surface features will behave in different wavelengths starting from visible to SWIR range of electromagnetic spectrum. So the topic of the lecture we are going to see starting from today is analyzing or understanding the spectral reflectance curves of few commonly occurring earth surface features in the visible NIR and SWIR domain. While discussing the interaction of EMR with earth surface features, I introduced you the concept of spectral reflectance curve. So a spectral reflectance curve is nothing but recording the wavelength and the spectral reflectance observed in the corresponding wavelength. So that is example is given in this particular slide. Here you can see that uh, in x axis we have wavelength, in y axis we have reflectance. So if we plot this for like various wavelengths especially within the range of say uh, 0.4 to up to say 2.5 or even 3 micrometers we call this this particular plot as spectral reflectance curve. So the, we have also seen that this spectral reflectance curve is mostly unique for various earth surface features and that is why sometimes we call this spectral reflectance curve also as spectral signature. So here you can see for different features like this is for grass which is a form of vegetation and this is for water body this tiny dotted line along the bottom is for water body and then for sand it looks something like this for concrete it looks something like this. So essentially what we can observe is different features behave differently when EMR is irradiated over it or when EMR interacts with different features it will behave differently and hence we get like a, a unique spectral reflectance pattern or unique spectral reflectance curve for different different features. In this series of lectures we are going to analyze why such spectral reflectance curves are observed. We are going to uh, go a little bit in detail and reason out why the spectral reflectance curve has a particular pattern for a particular feature. So we are going to discuss about the spectral reflectance curves of vegetation soil, water and snow. So we are going to describe in detail about the spectral reference curve of these four features which is or which are mostly abundant on the earth surface and also we are going to discuss about what factors influence the spectral reference curve of these four class of features. 
In addition to this, at the end of this particular lecture or this particular topic, we are also going to get introduced to the concept of spectral indices. So, this is what we are going to cover in the series of lectures starting from today, maybe for next uh, 3 to 4 lectures. So, first we are going to start with the spectral reflectance curves of vegetation. So, one of the earliest and primary application of remote sensing was vegetation monitoring and vegetation has been studied in detail about how it will look uh, in the solar reflective portion of EMR, what factors will affect it. And vegetation as a whole, if you look at it like a global scale, vegetation as a whole can influence earth surface or earth system to a larger extent. Vegetation plays a major role in controlling the earth system itself, uh, like it can change the water cycle, uh, it can change the carbon cycle, only from vegetation uh, we derive our food that is essentially the crops. So, vegetation covers like the entire spectrum or the entire gamut of starting from trees, uh, plants, crops, grasses and so on. Even though vegetation has like many different complex forms starting from like tiny algae to like huge trees, it can take la variety of shapes and everything. The spectral reference curve of vegetation has like a one particular unique pattern. So, this is like general of healthy green vegetation or in particular we are going to discuss about the spectral reference curve of healthy green leaf. We will start with understanding the spectral reference of one leaf and then slowly we will build our understanding of how it will look when we move up in the sky that is when we start when we move away from single leaf to uh, looking at one plant or one full canopy and so on. So, at first we will start by looking at the spectral reference curve of one single healthy leaf that is given in this particular slide. So, here in the x axis we have wavelengths ranging from 0.4 to roughly uh, 2.5 micrometers and reflectance is plotted along the y axis. So, this is from like observed data uh, in laboratory measurements, I have taken it from a uh, spectral library called EcoStress library. Okay. So, you can like uh, search it uh, in internet and you can like easily access the spectral library. So, this spectral library contains like uh, for various features on earth surface, for hundreds of features on earth surface how the reflectance will vary with different different wavelengths. You will get it in the form of a table. Uh, you can just plot them and analyze in detail how different features look. So, this spectral library I will uh, use to like a good extent in the series of lectures. You can easily uh, refer it in the internet. So, okay, coming back to the spectral reference curve of vegetation. The spectral reference curve of vegetation is typically called to have a peak and valley configuration. If you look at this, it has lot of small small peaks like here, uh, like here all these portions here and here and so on and also a lot of valleys like here, here, here and so on. <clears throat> so, that is why this particular reflectance pattern got a name of peak and valley configuration. We can divide this particular curve into three portions according to or uh, three divisions according to the wavelength range. That is we will first analyze what happens in visible band, then we will analyze what happens in the NIR band and finally we will analyze what happens in the SWIR band roughly 0.4 to 0.7 micrometers, 0.7 to 1.4 micrometers and from 1.4 to say up to say 2.5 or 3 micrometers, 3 range we will divide this curve into 3 different portions and then we will analyze in detail. Before doing that, it will be beneficial for us to understand uh, some information about the structure of a leaf. So, if you look at like a structure of a leaf, a single leaf, this is like the electron microscope image of one single leaf it shows that uh, it has different different portions that is a leaf has like one top portion what we call as epidermis. Uh, similar to our skin has like a top layer, 
even the uh, plant leaf has a top layer we call it as epidermis and some varieties of leaves have a waxy coating on top of it called cuticle. So, this is like a waxy coating present on top of the leaf which prevents the leaf from uh, over draining of water. So, this will be like a thick coating over like uh, desert plants and shrubs. It may be like a thin coating over like uh, plants and trees present in uh, heavy rainfall region. If you look here, here you can observe like two different types of cell, one like elongated uh, lengthy cells on top half of the leaf. So, this is like the top portion of the leaf and this is below this particular red line, this bottom portion of the leaf. Here you can see the cells present are actually uh, looking different. So, here it is like having like long elongated shape, here it is having like irregular shape. The cells that are present on the top portion, we call it as the palisite parenchyma cells. The cells present on the bottom portion, we call it as the uh, spongy parenchyma mesophyll cell. This, this like this particular portion, we call it as mesophyll. So, we call it as spongy parenchyma. On the top, we call it as palisade parenchyma. In the top portion, we have one of the most important pigment in the vegetation that is the chlorophyll. And uh, we all know that chlorophyll is one of the most essential pigment or chemical substance to be present in the leaf that enables the leaves to do photosynthesis which produces food on its own that gives leaves its characteristic green color and so on. So, the chlorophyll the most important pigment in the leaf is present in the palisade parenchyma cells that is the elongated cells mostly on the top portion of the leaf. If you look at like the bottom portion, the spongy parenchyma portion, we will have we can observe lot of air gaps or air space is present in between the cells. So, this particular air space when water is present it will be filled with water that is when plants take water from the root system, the water will come and occupy this particular air space and when plants dry out, this air space will, will be removed of water and it will again become like uh, gaps filled with air. So, this is like a very basic structure or basic introduction to the structure of leaf. Now, we go back to the spectral refractance curve and possibly analyze or understand what controls the spectral refractance curve for different different portions. So, here there is one more uh, spectral refractance curve of healthy green vegetation. So, within the visible range that is in the wavelength of 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 micrometers, the primary factor that influence uh, the spectral refractance curve is the leaf pigments or absorption due to leaf pigments. So, pigments are nothing but like chemical substances which is present in the leaf. Uh, chlorophyll is one of the most commonly occurring uh, pigment that is present in the leaf. Similarly, there can be like other type of pigments like carotene and so on. So, within the visible range, it is the presence or absence of leaf pigments which influences the spectral refractance curve to a large extent. Once we enter into the NIR portion that is starting from 0 0.7 to 1.4 micrometers, the leaf internal structure or the scattering happening within the leaf controls the spectral reference portion. So, in the visible it is the pigments, in the NIR range it is the leaf's internal structure. And in the SWIR range that is after 1.4 micrometers, it is the leaf water content that controls the spectral reflectance curve that is wavelength greater than 1.4 micrometers. This is roughly 0 0.7 to 1.4 micrometers and this is 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 micrometers. So, these three factors, one is the pigments then the leaves internal structure and then the leaves water content influences the spectral reference curve of 
healthy green vegetation. Also in this particular slide, uh, the atmospheric absorption is superimposed on the spectral reflectance curve like atmospheric it is denoted as like atmospheric transmissivity, transmissivity on this particular part of the y axis on the secondary axis. We can see that uh, there are like for most of the portions like up to like NIR the atmosphere is kind of fairly transparent uh, with almost like 50 percent transmissivity and almost like in most of the bands it, the transmissivity is up to 80 percent. But there are like really strong absorption bands of atmosphere around this 1.4, uh, around this 1.9 and around this 2.7 micrometers. So when we study the spectral reflectance curve of vegetation in ground in laboratory measurement, we will get the entire curve. But when we do it in the atmosphere, like when we do it from satellites, because of influence of atmosphere, we may not be able to do uh, remote sensing of the entire solar reflected portion. We may have to leave certain bands so that the atmospheric influence is reduced or essentially we have to do uh, remote sensing of vegetation in the uh, atmospheric windows avoiding the bands in which uh, atmosphere is highly absorbed being. Okay. We will move ahead. Now we have got a very broad general introduction about uh, the leaves internal structure and also uh, what factors controls the reflectance or spectral reflectance curve of vegetation in different portion of EMR especially in the solar reflected domain. So now we will go little bit in detail and study each portion individually. First we will start with the visible portion of the spectrum. As I have already told you, the most important factor that controls the vegetation's reflectance is the pigment absorption in the visible portion of EMR. And pigments essentially mean chemical substances present within the cell or present within the leaf. And one of the most important pigment or the most abundant pigment is chlorophyll. So this particular curve on the left hand side gives the absorption curve of chlorophyll. So this is not the reflectance curve, this is the absorption curve. How chlorophyll absorbs in different wavelengths starting from uh, ultraviolet and all the way up to red band. If we closely observe this, the absorption is pretty high in blue wavelength roughly around like 0.4 to 0.45 micrometers and similarly the absorption is fairly high in the red wavelength that is from 0.6 to 0.7 micrometers and absorption is very low in the green band of the spectrum 0.5 to 0.6. So essentially a leaf containing a lot of chlorophyll pigments will be absorbing blue wavelength and red wavelength to a significant extent and will be reflecting green wavelength again to a large extent. So that is <coughs> chlorophyll pigments absorb blue and green wavelength and reflect, uh, sorry this should be absorb blue and red wavelength and reflect green wavelength. <coughs> so this is especially for chlorophyll. So two kinds of chlorophyll pigments are there, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B, both of them has like a typical characteristics. But uh, if you look at this, uh, the chlorophyll B pigment has like a really strong absorption in the blue band in comparison to chlorophyll A. On the other hand, chlorophyll A has a really strong absorption in the red band in comparison with uh, chlorophyll B pigment. So based on the presence of different types of chlorophyll, the reflectance can vary. But essentially the overall feature that is absorption in blue and red wavelength and reflection in green wavelength will be remaining. Apart from chlorophyll, there can be other pigments that can be present in the leaf say beta carotene, pycoerythrin, pycocyanin and so on. So as the pigment changes or as the leaf changes through different stages of its growth cycle, uh, the pigments contained within the leaf will change 
and hence the leaves characteristic color also will change. So like essentially we have seen for a healthy green leaf chlorophyll will be the most abundant uh, pigment present within the leaf if the leaf is extremely healthy. So uh, the absorption features or the reflection feature, uh, reflection feature of chlorophyll will be dominating like it will be absorbing lot of uh, red and blue wavelength and it will be reflecting green wavelength. That is what gives healthy leaves its characteristic green color. Chlorophyll is abundant in healthy green leaf. But if the leaf progresses through different stages of its growth cycle, we call it as senescence uh, or phenological cycle. If the leaf matures, what will happen is different pigments will come in, chlorophyll will drop, other pigments may start to increase in the quantity. When that happens, the leaf's color may change depend, depending on the pigments that is becoming abundant now. So here if you look at like uh, let us say like uh, uh, beta carotene is being present in the leaf. So you can see that beta carotene absorbs a lot in the blue wavelength again, but its absorption becomes extremely low in uh, green and red portion combined together. So when beta carotene becomes like the dominant pigment within the leaf, it will absorb blue and it will reflect green and red portions and it may have like a, a leaf may have like a yellowish appearance. Similarly, if pycoerythrin is like the primary pigment present in the leaf, it absorbs primarily in the green band with very low absorption in blue and red bands. So again it may have, it may produce a completely different color to the leaf. So the absorption by different different pigments is what drives the spectral reflectance curve of vegetation in the visible part of the spectrum and also this particular absorption of certain characteristic wavelengths gives the leaves its characteristic color like absorption of blue and red leaving green out will give the leaf the green color. This is done by chlorophyll. Uh, absorption of uh, blue only allowing green and red to pass may give the leaf an yellowish color that is because of like the beta carotene and so on. So the presence or absence of certain pigments will drive or will dominate the spectral reflectance property of vegetation. So as the vegetation goes through different cycles of its growth phase uh, or if the vegetation undergoes certain amount of stress the pigments present within the leaf will change. It may some other pigments instead of chlorophyll may come in and hence the color of the leaf will start to vary. We will observe it visibly with our eyes as our eyes are tuned to observing visible portion of EMR. So this particular figure is uh, gives another example of how uh, leaf with different different colors look or how the spectral reflectance curve of leaves in different different colors look. Say for a healthy green leaf you can see uh, reflectance is like pretty high in the green portion that is around like 0.55 micrometers and it is like low in the blue and also it is low in the red portion. You can observe it from here, yes up to here, up to 0.7. But uh, if you look at like other uh, leaves that is they say take this reddish purple leaf, you can see that uh, the reflectance is pretty low in almost all portion of EMR giving like a uh, combined mix of like a dark color that is why the leaf may appear like reddish purple or for a red leaf uh, the reflectance in red portion is very high with very low reflectance in green portion. So this is because of presence of different different pigments present within the leaf essentially that will dominate or that will control the reflectance portion of uh, reflectance pattern of leaf especially in the visible range. Uh, next we will move on to discuss about the spectral reflectance property of leaf in the NIR portion of electromagnetic spectrum. So if you look at the basic spectral reflectance curve, maybe I will go back to that particular slide. So if you look at like this particular curve on the slide, we can observe that uh, the reflectance is quite low in the visible part that is around like less than uh, say 10 to 12 percent maximum itself is like say 12 percent in the visible portion. 
If you transfer to NAR portion after this 0.7 micrometers, you can see the reflectance increases drastically, it reaches 50 percent. And again it slowly begins to decrease as we increase in the wavelength. But if you look at this particular curve in general, the reflectance starting from NIR all the way up to like SWR portion is relatively higher when compared to the reflectance in the visible band. And it is the highest in the NIR portion, the reflectance is highest in the NIR portion. The reason for this is plants typically need light for its function, we all know that it has to do photosynthesis, it needs its internal energy which it derives from sunlight. And sunlight is a mixture of or mixture of various wavelengths, we, we also know that with the primary uh, wavelength or the wavelength with in which maximum energy coming is green portion typically. So what happens is leaves derives most of its energy requirement from the visible portion of EMR that is between 0.4 to 0.7 micrometers leaves do lot of absorption and uses that particular energy for its functioning and photosynthesis. That is why leaves reflect very little amount in the visible portion. The reflectance is pretty low uh, like less than like 15 percent in almost the entire visible range. And this is still lower in the blue and red band in comparison to green. But leaves will not absorb EMR with the same efficiency in the NIR portion of the spectrum because a significant amount of solar energy will come in the NIR portion of the spectrum also. And if leaves absorbs all these things with the same efficiency um, with which it absorbs visible wavelength, then it will overheat the leaves and leaves may die causing an irreparable damage. So that is why in order to prevent the leaf from dying or from preventing the leaf from irreparable damage, leaves generally has a tendency of high reflectance and high transmittance in the NIR portion of electromagnetic spectrum. So essentially in the NIR portion it is the leaf's internal structure that controls the reflectance. That is leaves do not want to store NIR or leaves do not want to absorb because it is not going to use it. Most of the uses for leaves or most of the energy requirement for leaves comes in the visible portion of the spectrum itself that is why it absorbs a lot of visible portion of EMR reflecting very little. But it does not want to store and use NIR with a full efficiency. So what the leaf structure will do is like when I showed you the leaves internal stru structure I told you that uh, the top portion contains this uh, chlorophyll cells like the palisade parenchyma cells which contains chlorophyll. The lower half of the portion contains uh, air gaps plus spongy parenchyma cells. So when NIR enters through a leaf, NIR energy enters through a leaf, first thing is leaf has a high transmissivity like leaves allow NIR to pass through it, it is not going to absorb it. When it passes through it will cross the top half of the leaf or the top portion of the leaf, then it will enter the portion, the lower portion where it also encounters air gaps present, air gaps or water it will be present. So there will be like a change in the medium like we will just go back to the initial part of the classes where I discussed about how EMR will uh, interact with different features like the initial lectures when we discuss about properties of EMR. I told you that when EMR travels from one medium to another medium at the surface that divides medium 1 and medium 2 it will undergo reflection that we have already discussed. So some part may be transmitted inside, some part may be absorbed and some part may be reflected and this is what we gave, we studied as like reflectance uh, plus transmittance plus absorptance is equal to 1. This is we have already studied. But what we have to remember is when there is like a change in medium, a portion of EMR is reflected back and some portion is transmitted inside the medium. 
If you take leaf, absorption is quite low, it has lot of reflection and transmittance. So when let us say this is like a single leaf, EMR is going to instant on it. So what will happen, maybe we will go back to the slide where we discuss the internal structure that will be much easier to explain. So let us say if EMR is coming into it is in especially in the NAR portion, what will happen is the leaf will allow or leaf will transmit a large portion of EMR and whenever this NAR energy encounters a discontinuity or a change in medium say from a plant cell to like air gap or if it is filled with water whatever it may be, it will undergo multiple reflection say from here it may be reflected here, it can again be reflected here and it can undergo like this a lot of multiple reflections. So the leaf's internal structure, how the cells are oriented within the leaf, how the air gaps are oriented within the leaf will cause the energy in the NAR portion to undergo multiple reflection within the leaf and also combining this with high transmittance, uh, the leaf after undergoing multiple reflectance will be either uh, reflected totally in the upward direction like some part of it may be reflected again in the top part or some may be reflected or transmitted down to the bottom part. So essentially what I want to convey is leaf has high transmittance and high reflectance especially in the NAR portion. So when energy enters into the leaf what will happen is it will transmit through and when it encounters a change in medium that is from leaf cell to uh, air gap or whatever if it, when it encounters a different medium it will undergo uh, multiple it will undergo reflection and because of the random orientation of leaf pigments and leaf uh, air spaces NAR will undergo multiple reflections and finally some fraction of NAR will come out of the top part of the leaf itself giving like a total reflectance. Some portion of energy will be allowed to transmit completely through the leaf and will be coming out of the bottom part of the leaf. So essentially what you have to remember is a large portion of NIR is either reflected totally like if you look at a leaf as a whole uh, leaving the internal part away, a large portion of EMR will be reflected or transmitted from the leaf. This is what you have to remember. So in this particular lecture, we have started discussing about the spectral reflectance property of vegetation, especially of a leaf. We have covered the uh, reflectance property in the visible portion and we have started discussing about the NAR portion and we will continue this and further topics in the next lecture. Thank you very much.